Humans! Welcome to the podcast, Wake Up Humans, with Steve Judson. Hello, this is Dr. Steven Judson. You're listening to the Wake Up Humans podcast. How are we doing post-Super Bowl Sunday? How are you a Patriot fans doing? You got to be pretty fired up, and all your Rams fans got to be a little bummed. But one team showed up a little more than the other. It's kind of a weak Super Bowl, an amazing defensive Super Bowl. But, uh, you know, you look at this Rams quarterback, the biggest game of his life, man, he just didn't produce. Or was the Patriots defense that good? Now, I'm a Giants fan. I'm a diehard Giants fan. Grew up going to Giants games. We had season tickets growing up. So when people are asking me, who am I voting for or pushing for during this Super Bowl? You know, I would have liked to have seen the Rams win. Just a new team, new blood. But man, it's hard hard to go against uh, Brady and everything he's doing. There's a lot of haters out there because of his success. And in my heart, you know, and then being in New England, I was pushing for him. And he handled it like a class act. Now, it's tough to beat that team. Their coaching staff are the Wizards. Those guys are amazing at picking people apart, finding their weakness, and then exposing it. And it was just a matter of time before the Patriots did their thing. But when you got people like Edelman and Gronkowski and Brady working together... I call them the GOATs. I think for their positions, they are amongst the greatest of all time. And their bond they have together, they talk a lot about their bond and their friendship. It's like a brotherhood. That when they're in battle, that's a tough thing to beat. When you got a group of men in sync like that, they know what each other are thinking. They have complete faith in one another. They've pushed each other through the year to succeed, to train, to work hard. And when it comes time to outperform the opponent, they always do it. The coolest thing about these guys is they all get adjusted regularly. They're living with a clear atlas. Brady's been quoted seven to- several times talking about his lifestyle and what he's had to do to become the greatest of all time and the commitment. But one of the greatest things I saw was when they were interviewing him at the end of the game in the end zone on the podium, congratulating him on winning six. How cool was it to see him holding his baby girl? And she's talking. She doesn't care that millions of people are watching Daddy try to give an interview. And he didn't hush her up. He didn't hand her off to anybody. He just kind of smiled at her and, and laughed. I thought that was really cool. And when all the confetti was coming down, she said, Dad, look at this. This is cool. Look at this. It was like a big party. She has no idea. Someday she'll be a 20-year-old woman looking at this video and she'll laugh. But it was cool as a man who just came through a battle, getting sacked, getting hit, getting punched in the jaw, standing there holding his baby, addressing his wife from the podium, his sons, and talking about his family. To me, that's what matters most, man. When you look at all the negativity in the world and even in professional sports and you see a man like this step up on one of the biggest days of his life where he claimed his stake as the greatest quarterback in history, the first to ever win six Super Bowls. And mind you, without the best team, but the best coaching, best motivators, and the most committed athletes in the game. And when he's able to stand up there and realize all his hard work has brought him to this moment and the biggest thing that he's going to address is his family. And the next cool thing was... When the announcer was mentioning Edelman being the MVP, and Brady was truly, truly happy for him and embraced him and gave him a hug and said he deserved it. He played the game of his life. What an appreciation for the human spirit. And if we could look at that as a role model for our children. I posted something on social media, and it was a picture of Brady when he was getting uh, recruited and drafted for the NFL. And he's standing in his shorts. He looks out of shape, at least by NFL standards. He looks like a fragile little kid at least by NFL standards. And he didn't look like a guy who was going to become the greatest quarterback of all time. But there's a look in his eyes where I think he believed he was going to become the greatest quarterback of all time. I believe he had a chip on his shoulder and he felt he had something to prove. And if you look how he's transformed himself from that initial picture to the man he is now, and when you study Brady and his lifestyle and what he's done, seeing the chiropractor regularly, eating clean food, exercising, keeping a positive mental attitude, surrounding himself with amazing people, bonding great relationships with friends. It's known that him and uh, Edelman and Gronkowski spent a lot of time together, traveled together. And you can imagine what their conversations are like, but also what their mindset is stepping into the new season. And because of his age, 40 plus years, people are questioning whether or not he should retire. And it was funny to hear the announcer ask him if he would retire, is this is it? And what could possibly motivate him at this stage of the game, he's done it all. Pro Bowl quarterback, six-time Super Bowl champion, been Super Bowl MVP, it's the greatest. And he smiled like a kid and looked around the stadium and said, look at these people. It was like addressing the energy in the room. And he said, this is why I'll do it. This is why I'll come back. Because it's fun. And man, if we could look at life like that, 
They say today is probably one of the top days where people call out of work because they sat on their couch and got shit-faced, ate crap, and are waking up not feeling good today because they were watching the greatest of all time. Because they were watching somebody else perform. They were watching someone else make a legacy in their life and be amazing. And now today they're waking up tired, hungover, toxic, weak, perhaps mad their team lost, mad that this pretty boy did it all over again and it's not fair. And the stinking thinking is just going to settle in, settle into their household. They also say it's one of the top nights for domestic abuse, which is sickening to me. It is the biggest time for sex trafficking, which is absolutely insane that all this stuff is going on. But it's the mindset, people. We can't look at the symptom, waking up and not feeling good that your team didn't win or you're excited your team won and you're hungover and toxic because that will affect the next two, three, four weeks of your life, which will then affect you three, four, five years from now. Because the choices we make today sometimes don't show up right away. You may not feel good at the moment, but how's it deteriorating and affecting your momentum to grow as a human being, spiritually, emotionally, and physically, monetarily, if we don't show up 100% all the time? Because we're making poor decisions in the present. And if you look at who you hung out with last night, did they empower you and make you a better person? Or are you making up, waking up today worse? And my challenge is to really analyze that and look in the mirror and say, what do I truly want out of my life? Am I truly as healthy as I can be? And if you just Google Brady's routine, if you did a quarter of it, would your life be better? If you got a clear atlas, ate a little better, exercised a bit, how can that change the projection of your life? And then to analyze the situation and say, if it changes the projection of my life, how does it change the projection of your family's life, your business's life? That's where the bigger picture is. And that's how we need to look at this stuff. Because as most people wake up and they go back to the job and do their work, our boy Brady is on a plane heading to the Caribbean somewhere, and I'm sure he's sore as hell. I'm sure he's hurting. I'm sure he's limping, but he's smiling. Because the past 364 days of training brought him to this point where now he could go sit on a beach with his family. It's not something to be jealous of. When you look at the guys probably put anywhere between 3 to 10 hours a day, if not more, of training every single day to stand on that podium and raise the trophy. So what's the trophy in our life? You know, we're in February now, and by the time this podcast goes out, it'll probably be March. And how many people are really adhering to the changes they wanted to make for their New Year's resolution? What is being solved? What's being followed through on? And my challenge is this, commit right now to sit down and write two things, two things that we can commit to that are going to make us better by the time we wake up this time next year. Absolute committal, where you could take a a black marker, permanent, go into your closet wall and write it on the wall and commit. Maybe it's losing 50 pounds, maybe it's saving $10,000, maybe it's just waking up at six in the morning to get to the gym before work, maybe it's to stop eating bread and cheese sugar. Maybe it's just time to make a call to that chiropractor you drive by all the time and start getting your atlas checked and living clear. If you need help finding one, message us on social media. That's Steve Judson. We have a public image page where we can help you find someone that you could trust, is specific, and is there to care for your family's needs to help you live clear. Because we know this major principle, once we get connected from within, helps us win championships in our own life. And that's the outcome and objective that we're looking for. One change at a time. And if that means you just get your scans, your x-ray, and you lay on a table and get a specific scientific gentle adjustment and watch your body wake up so then you can make these other dreams come true, that's what we need to help you do. And we'll help you find the person that can help you do that. We have contacts all over the world. Every day we're referring people. Since people have been reading the book, Wake Up Humans, available on Amazon, plug, plug. We get calls literally every day for people all over the country, and sometimes in Europe and Canada, looking for someone to take care of their family and make sure their atlas is clear. And the really cool thing is we're almost going on a year of the book being launched, is hearing people's stories that since they've taken this step, how much their health has changed, how much money they saved from doctor's visits and, and prescription drugs, how they've changed their lifestyle because they want to... F- to, to nurture their, their bodies better and their spirit and their family, how their kids have less ear infections. To me, this is the greatest championship of all. This is the things we need to look at and celebrate. But it's the simple things that sometimes confound us that we oversee, we don't look at, and we get too complex or overwhelmed with the daily grind in life and call out work just because we partied a little too hard. It's not the way we're supposed to live, people. Listen, there's a time and place for it. I'm all for going out and having a good time. 
But when you look at the statistics and, and hear the reports that will be coming through, I say as a country and as a nation and as a, a universal law of life, the more that we wake up to the principles from within and how God created us to be abundant and fruitful and fired up, society will change and we'll create a much better planet. So when you look at the little victories of people around us, because a Super Bowl victory is really a little victory in the big scheme of things, it's over. People are getting on planes today, going back home, and life carries on. We'll be looking for spring training coming up with baseball pretty soon, and that's just another thing to distract people from their own life and their own purpose. Don't let that be you. Enjoy the game, but don't let it slow down your progress in life. And look to your left and look to your right and make sure the people around you are on the same movement to be an absolutely amazing, amazing human being. The best father you could be, the best mother you could be, the best grandparent you could be, an amazing coach and mentor to many around that is guiding kids on a principle that perhaps we didn't have when we were younger. We weren't taught, but to teach these kids how to be amazing human beings as they grow up. It's not easy all the time. It's an art for sure, but it can be done. And it just has to be done one day at a time. One of the things I've done, which has helped me if you need a little motivation, is I put the the month-to-month calendar. I go to Staples and get the month-to-month calendar in my, put it, hang it in my uh, closet in my bedroom. And every day, I have goals of certain exercise and activities that I have to do. And I mark it. I have a code. I mark it in the day. And one of the most dreadful things is not marking something. So I motivate myself to do something every day and move. That was one of my biggest motivators was not just working all the time and getting exhausted, but making sure that I was taking a massive action step to take better care of myself, move the body and exercise, work out every single day. And the victory is marking it on the calendar. The horror is leaving it blank. No one wants to leave the box blank. And if you got a bunch of boxes lined up blank, you know something's got to change. I know my mindsets were off. I know I'm heading towards those bad habits. But as long as I keep checking the boxes and hold myself accountable, I know my ship is heading in the right direction. And this is all part of waking up, people. Because the more we do these little things, they are really little things when you think about it. They add up to be massive in this thing called life. And when we wake up and find our passion, our purpose and principle in this world and what we are meant to do, life becomes awesome. It becomes easier. It becomes enjoyable. And sometimes it's not necessarily raising the trophy in the air, but being able to acknowledge your family around you and seeing their joy and letting them express it, that makes it all worthwhile. So it all starts today, man. Buckle it up. Put it in writing. I tell everybody, get a yellow legal pad and put it in writing. What it is is up to you. What is the greatest vision and biggest thing you want to accomplish in your life? How do you want to wake up 10 years from now? And now five small things you could do every day that are going to move you in that direction. Keep it simple. Stay on target. Look at the goals every day and start checking the box. God bless you, love, and appreciate you. You've been listening to Wake Up Humans with Steve Judson. To get Steve's books, Wake Up Humans, and Atlas Adjusted, just visit Amazon. The Wake Up Humans podcast is a copyright of Steve Judson. Be sure to look up other episodes. Wake Up Humans will educate, inspire, and bring you clarity. Thanks for listening to Wake Up Humans with Steve Judson. Visit judsonchiropractic.com.